Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. We're going to be dividing radicals. And what I want you guys to think about when we're doing this is how we can simplify the top and bottom and then go back and rationalize the denominator if necessary. Now, in these particular problems, we're going to be working with perfect square numbers for the most part. So the directions say, simplify the following, assume all variables are non-negative. So let's go ahead and try it. Looking at example one, I'm going to rewrite this as square root of x cubed on top of square root of 4. Just so you guys can have a denominator there, the square root of 4 is just plain old 2. Now the top is a little bit trickier. I'm working with square root of x to the third. Well, I'm going to think of that as square root of x squared times square root of x, because square root of x squared is just plain old x. So that's going to be my top, x square root x. That cannot be simplified anymore, and the denominator doesn't have a radical, so I'm done. Let's try the next one. Now, in the next one, again, same idea. I'm going to simplify that as square root of 81 over square root of y to the fifth, because that helps me see that the top is just going to be 9. Now my, my denominator, my bottom, is kind of weird. I have y to the fifth, but then square rooted. So I'm going to rewrite that as the product of some perfect squares. I'm going to rewrite that y to the fifth as y squared times y squared times y, and each one of those under a radical. And the reason why I'm doing that is because the square root of y squared is y, there I have it again, and then root y. So it'll be y squared square root of y. That's my bottom. Okay, now many students will make this their final answer, except for we haven't rationalized the denominator yet. So this is not proper form. To finish this problem, I need to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root y over root y. So the final answer on top would look like 9 root y. On the bottom, I have y squared times y again. So altogether, that's y to the third. That looks like it could be simplified. It actually can't. That's my final answer. We're going to do one last one here. Just like before, I'm going to simplify this into perfect squares as much as I can. So like on top here, I have square root of 25, square root of x squared, and then I have 1x left over. So just looking at the top only now, I have 5x root x. That's pretty good. Let's look at the bottom here. Um, I have square root of 32, and then I'm splitting up that as much as I can into perfect squares. So instead of 32, I'm going to make that square root of 16 times square root of 2. And then I have square root of x squared, square root of x squared, square root of x squared again. So my bottom would be 4 times square root of 2 times x times x times x, otherwise known as 4x to the third square root of 2. So I'm going to continue. What I'm going to do is now simplify the x's and rationalize the denominator. Simplify the x's because I have x over x to the third. If I have x over x to the third, that's going to leave me just x squared on the bottom. Still have square root of x and square root of 2 to deal with. Okay, now that square root of x on top is kind of scary, right? I have x's, I have square roots of x's, I have x squareds, but the fact that it's in the top means that it's, it's not messing up my form. It's not improper math form. The square root of 2 is the bad news. The square root of 2 in the bottom of the fraction needs to go, so I'm going to rationalize the denominator. Now on top I have 5 root 2x. On the bottom I have 4x squared, and then root 2 times root 2 is regular old 2. So my bottom is going to be 8x squared. Now that cannot be simplified any further. So that's my final answer there. I'm going to show you, though, one other way to approach that problem. What if instead of simplifying the top and simplifying the bottom separately, what if I had reduced those x's to begin with? Then it would look like this. I'd have 25 on top and 32 on the bottom still. That fraction cannot be reduced, but the x to the third over x to the sixth, that could just become x to the third on the bottom. And then to go from there, I'd have 5 over, and then same idea on the bottom, I'd have 4 root 2 times square root of x squared root x. That's going to give me the same answer, but just a little bit faster. 5 over 4x root 2x. And then the thing I'm rationalizing with is root 2x. So either way, I'm going to end up with that same answer right there. It just depends on whether you want to simplify to begin with or simplify at the end. And by 2. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it. Work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. Dang.
Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're gonna be doing a lot of work. You're gonna be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. 